urbanism is a uh, public engagement and project delivery process. Try things out in the short term to see if we can uh, learn from them, engage people in a conversation about making changes to streets and public spaces, and then investing in those elements that work well and gain support through a much more open process. Tactical urbanism has been around for a really long time. It's very quick, nimble, inexpensive ways to demonstrate how you can change a street and make it safer and better for people on bikes, for people on foot. Uh, tactical urbanism to me means taking a space that's previously been unused and livening it up in a way that makes it more of a, an engaging space as opposed to have it feel cold or dangerous. So the really fun part about tactical urbanism is that it allows people to kind of riff on the idea. So oh, maybe three or four years ago we started seeing and applying orange traffic cones, which is, you, you know, cones are ubiquitous in any city. You can find them on the street, you can find them in public space, you can pull them off the back of a public works truck. It's a journey that's about uh, two years old now, I guess. It started in uh, August of 2016 when I dropped some flowers and cones in the buffer of a bike lane after uh, a young woman, Anita Kerman, was killed riding on uh, Mass Ave and Beacon Street. I went to Home Depot, uh, I bought flowers that were, I don't know, five or ten bucks a pot, and I stole some traffic cones from a work site. Then I did a GoFundMe and I wound up raising five or six thousand bucks. And so then it was, I had access to a lot more materials. And since then, I've just continued to do it. I got involved with a few tactical urbanism projects just locally on my street corner, putting out some cones to slow down drivers. I put out a couple of cones and boom, it worked instantly. Two cones right at the corner and drivers turning would just slow down and stop for pedestrians. It really worked like magic. There's a whole movement uh, around the country setting up transformation departments as opposed to transportation departments uh, in Seattle and Portland and Boston and New York City. There is the New York City Department of Transformation and they've done some really big high profile projects. The Department of Transformation put out cones with sunflowers on them for a morning commute and posted something on Twitter to say that we've fixed the Christie Street bike lane and this fed into the community board support, the local advocate proposal, and we think, we hope, pushed DOT a little farther to get the Christie Street bike lane project in and done. And it's really, I think, one of the best protected bike lanes in the city. So behind me is the first tactical urbanism project in Rotterdam. The local municipality asked us to to make something creative and connect the, par the different parts of the intersection together. And what is interesting also about this, we are using your thermoplast and because we wanted to do this uh, intervention very quick and uh, very simple and easy to, to apply, we use standard traffic and highway markings. And so we're using something that is normally oriented into car traffic and we make it into something that celebrates more the pedestrians. Some friends of mine in Edmonton reimagined a bus stop and I looked at it and there's little garden gnomes and flowers all over the place and they put a cushion on the bench gives the opportunity for kids to play there tactical urbanism is not new but what was missing is the ubiquitous use of social media like twitter to spread the use of materials around the globe now you can see somebody in new york or boston or sydney australia or you know anywhere in europe put out a new project, you see people take that idea and then iterate on it or use it themselves. Seeing what's been happening in San Francisco, in New York, in Portland, it's really inspiring and I feel like we all feed off of each other. Pinterest is a great place to find ideas. In general, just speak with local artists, with local residents and try to convince the local municipality that it might be a very simple, easy, and quite cheap way to promote your city. Twitter and Facebook and Instagram even have done a lot to really expose people to the options and possibilities. It's great to see that you know these grassroots movements can just come along and change a space. We've seen people take, say, pinwheels and put them on top, flowers uh, to beautify them, give them a little bit of a different edge. I think that the, the flowers are crucial. They're so not threatening. They introduce joy into the intervention. More recently, we've seen a lot of people use plungers. Again, a very low cost, 
and funny material to be using, but which act and look like bollards. You put out flowers on a bike lane, and that's something different that you don't see every day. You put plungers out, and you definitely don't see that every day. Um, so you can see how this will be ripe for a lot of media attention, for a lot of social media attention. You know, whenever there's a fatality, I like to try and go and visit the site and see if there's something that's really easy that I can do to fix it and to show the city that something can be done really quickly. So I sort of pride myself on getting there and doing something before that. These big institutions, our city government, they can't move quickly. They can't move nimbly. They're not designed to do that. But you as an individual citizen, you can. Without having to be a professional, you can use these low-cost materials and go out and Show people, show your city leaders, show your neighbors, show business owners, show yourself that change is possible. We see people who aren't street advocates do this. We see crossing guards do this. They'll put out traffic cones at corners to make sure that drivers slow down when they're coming around a corner and yield to kids in the crosswalk. And so it's not thinking that you can solve all of the urban transportation problems or placemaking problems in one go, but thinking that I'm gonna do this one thing that I'm, I know that I can do and hopefully other people will be inspired and take up similar actions. Even if it's just one street corner, you can put out a traffic cone and you can tell your city, hey look, this worked, let's do it. And so we've seen across the US and across the globe, people taking it upon themselves to try these changes out. And many, many times this has then led to longer term transformation or investment from city departments or leaders, which is really exciting to see. And when they did a Vision Zero project on Mass Ave, they did one section where I'd been dropping cones for months and months. They actually put uh, flex posts in this one location in the street, so that felt like a, an endorsement of what I had been doing. When you talk about tactical urbanism, you talk about some urban activists that are trying to do some guerrilla work. But here in Rotterdam, the local government, they are embracing, they want to have it. They see it as a tool to promote their strategic plans and to promote plans that they have for the long term, to do it very fast. We live in Vancouver and the city has done so much over the last few years to engage a lot of spaces and you know, the biggest example would be a place like Robson Square which usually is choked with buses and cars but for the last several years they've closed it off to car traffic and opened up and livened up the space so it's a proof that if you just try something and try changing a space up it can become a permanent addition to your city. If you're just walking down the street and there's a traffic cone on the corner, take it and put it in the street. 